Hi, it's Sarah from Waves and Wild here. Um, I'm just getting ready to sew my boys their Christmas pajamas. And so I thought I'd do a quick um, video tutorial about how to sew the ME t-shirt. Okay, it's a really useful one to have, and it's a great one for beginners since it has no hems. Um, this means you can, if you have an overlock or a serger, you can make it all on the one machine, but um, equally, you don't need to have an overlocker or a serger. You can sew the whole thing on a regular sewing machine. So I've already printed out and cut out my pattern piece. You can see I've stuck it, stuck it together very messily with um, masking tape. Um, behind the scenes, I am a very untidy, scruffy person, and my family will attest to this, um, but nobody's here marking me on how neat my pattern pieces are. Um, I've also got my fabric ready. This gorgeous Christmas print fabric is from Clover & Co. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. I bought this with my own hard-earned money. Um, but she did give me a sneaky little discount because the owner is so gorgeous. Um, and so I can never keep up with the rules behind what you have to say if something's been sponsored or gifted or discounted. So for full transparency, that's the information about the fabric. I paid for it with my money, but the owner did give me um, a discount because she is gorgeous. Um, if you're in Australia, I do recommend you go and check out Clover & Co. So the main pattern piece on the Emmy is cut on the fold. This means you have to fold your fabric in half and you place the fold edge of it on the fold. Um, my pattern is quite a linear pattern on my fabric, so I've done my best to um, fold it really accurately so that my lines will go straight across. Um, jersey can be a bit wibbly wobbly, it might not be absolutely perfect, but this isn't a video on pattern matching, this is a video on the Emmy, so, um, but it's just something to consider when you're cutting, if you have a linear fabric, a linear pattern, to make sure your stripes are going nice and straight. Um, also, obviously, if you have a directional print like this one, make sure that you place the bottom of your t-shirt at the bottom of your fabric and the neckline at the top, so your print is going the right way. Nobody wants upside down Santas or Christmas trees. So I'm gonna place my pattern so that this fold edge is on the fold of my fabric. And then I just need to cut it out. Now, I'm also terrible for never having pattern weights to hand. So I'm going to improvise here with a couple of pairs of scissors. Now, I don't know whether you could see there, but I've actually cut the bottom line um, about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit more than that, um, six, seven millimeters longer than the pattern piece. This is because of it being a linear design and I want to make sure that that bottom line is really straight across the whole piece. So I'm actually going to cut it a little bit longer, unfold and just trim to make sure that it follows one of the lines on the pattern. If you're not doing a linear design or yeah, and that's not relevant to you, then you don't need to worry about that. You just cut it. Um, right up against the pattern piece. Just wanted to explain that so you didn't think that I was being um, really slapdash with my cutting. So I will fix that. So I'll open it up and there I can see that sort of a quarter inch up from the bottom is the bottom of this blue star line. So what I'll do is I'll um, take my quilting ruler and I'll cut all the way across um, that in one go. So there, now I've got a nice, much straighter line that follows the bottom of those blue stars. So then I will repeat the process to do the front. Now I've cut the back neckline, that's what I've just cut out just then. Um, I will need to cut my second pattern piece with this lower neckline for the front of the t-shirt. Now you can, if you wish, print out two pattern pieces and have one that's cut for the back and one that's cut for the front. Um, I actually prefer just to cut most of this line and leave a little bit uncut and fold it down. And you can actually see that um, I've already done that with a larger size. I've just cut out um, a jack size and this is Charlie's size that I'm cutting out now. So that's why I've got a wobbly bit here. But I will cut this line, most of it, and then fold it down. And if you're gonna keep your pattern pieces for a long time, then you could place a piece of tape over the little bit that you leave to help keep that bit stronger um, and keep 
them together. My kids don't stay in the same size long enough for me to keep pattern pieces for very long, but that is what I would recommend doing. Um, I also want to say that I'm about to use a rotary cutter here, but this is not the rotary cutter I use for cutting my fabric. This is an old rotary cutter that I actually don't like for cutting fabric. And I use this for cutting paper and it works really well for me, but it's not what it's designed for. Um, but you don't use the same rotary cutter for your fabric as you do for your paper. That's the same as somebody taking your best fabric scissors and using them to cut paper. Okay, it's a big no, no. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that because last time I sh showed a video with me using a rotary cutter um, cutting paper, I had all kinds of shocked people messaging me and saying how terrible it was and how I really shouldn't be doing that. So there we go. So there you can see I can now cut my front neckline, but I can fold this back up again if I wanted to cut a second, which I actually will be doing later today. I've got several Christmas tops to make for Charlie for several different performances. So I'm now going to cut my front pattern piece with this bit folded down. So here I have my fabric folded and ready to cut my front t-shirt pattern piece. Because I've cut, I'm cutting the second piece right next to the first one, I can see where my cuts were for the other pattern piece. So I can line this up so it'll be pretty much um, level with my first pattern piece, which means my stripes should go pretty well around the side. Um, like I say, this is not a pattern matching video. I do have a pattern matching video if you want to go watch that, if you're looking for the perfect pattern match and I'll drop in some links in the comments but this is just for a pair of pajamas that will probably be worn about four times because my children are fickle like that so um, I'm not going to spend hours trying to pattern match it but by following the lines where I cut last time I can make it pretty even. Now again, you'll see I cut the bottom a little longer and then I um, neatened it up with my quilting ruler at the end. That's literally just because um, I'm using this linear design and I want that bottom edge to be really even. So next I need to cut my two sleeves. Again, the sleeves are placed on the fold. So I will fold my fabric, trying to match those stripes and making sure that my print is the right way up. Now I'm trying to be really economical with my fabric so that I can get um, some pajama shorts out of this same meter, which is starting to get a little bit tight for Charlie, the size he is now. So I'm gonna cut one sleeve here and then just move my pattern piece down and do my other sleeve here. If I was making something and I wanted my two sleeves to be identical, I would cut one and then on the same area of print, I would fold it again and cut one so that I had two with the same the exact same print on the sleeves but like I say I'm trying to be economical with my fabric and this is going to give me the bigger piece to cut my shorts out later. So that's what your sleeve pieces should look like when you've cut them out. So next I need to cut out the cuffs for um, my t-shirt. What I like to do if I'm going to be using a pattern again is to write the cuff measurements um, for the size that I'm doing on the pattern piece so that I don't have to refer to the instructions. I've made this pattern so many times that I don't need to look at the instructions file every time. Um, so if you're in that same position it just saves you a little bit of time. So the bottom cuff for this one is 24 and 7 eighths of an inch by three and a half inches. Now I'm a bit contrary. I um, use the metric system for everything because I am British Australian and both of those countries use the metric system, except for when it comes to cutting out things in sewing, because I have um, a quilting ruler, which is an American quilting ruler and works in inches. So I do tend to use inches for um, doing strips and cuffs and things like that. Um, I'm gonna leave the neckband just for now and I'll have a chat to you about that later. So my short cuff, eight and three quarter inches, no sorry, eight and three eighths of an inch by two and three eighths of an inch for Charlie's size. 
So there, I've got those. So I will now use my quilting ruler to um, cut these out. There are pattern pieces or you can create your own pattern pieces on paper if you prefer having paper pieces in front of you or you can print them out um, from the print at home pattern. But I much prefer using a ruler and a rotary cutter. I get the best results that way. So I've now cut out all of my pieces apart from my neck band, which I will do last. And I'm now ready to start sewing my t-shirt. Now, the power of video, um, this may only be the next section of the video, but it's actually the next day for me. And you can see that as my fabric's been sat, not very well folded um, in my studio, the edges have all started to go a bit curly. This is just something that happens when you're using jersey. Um, I tend to just carry on and work regardless. Um, just pin really carefully and as you sew it will sort itself out and um, if you're really struggling to pin and to work with it with the curly edges um, give it a really good iron um, and that should help flatten out some of those curls but it is just something that you will often have to deal with when you're working with jersey so I'm going to pop my bands and my sleeves to one side and the first step for constructing this t-shirt is to take the back and then place the front so that your fabric is right sides facing so if you're using a print that means that the print will be facing each other if you're using um, a plain fabric there will generally still be a right side and a wrong side so do take care that you're matching right sides to right sides but with a plain fabric if you make an error it's not so, so obvious um, and you can probably get away with it so I've placed my front and my back right sides facing and I'm going to pin um, along here the two shoulder seams and then I will sew using a six millimeter or quarter inch seam allowance. So here I have sewn that um, shoulder seam with a six millimeter seam allowance and the next step is to add the sleeves. So to do this you need to open your garment up so that um, you're looking at both the front and the back of your t-shirt take one sleeve piece and if you've cut it according to the pattern you'll have like a little um, point which just shows you where the center of your sleeve is you're not actually going to sew a little point into your garment but it just helps you line up the center of your sleeve with that shoulder seam so I'm going to match again right sides facing my sleeve piece to my main garment and that little point in the center of the sleeve curve is going to go on the shoulder seam. I will then match up the end of that sleeve curve with this point here where the side of my t-shirt goes into the sleeve. Do the same on the other side. And then I'm going to gradually ease the rest of the sleeve fabric into place. Um, this is a reasonably relaxed pattern and you're using a stretch fabric. There's not a lot of easing required, but you are um, joining two slightly different curves together to create a 3D shape because you are 3D. So there, if I lay it out flat, you can see how the sleeve is now attached to the main body. So I'm going to take that to my machine and again, sew with a six millimeter quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. And then I will go do the same on the second side with my second sleeve. Here I've got my t-shirt with my two sleeves attached at the shoulder. Now, I don't know how well this will show up, but um, if you see here, this is where on the pattern, the sleeve pattern piece, there was a little point and that was my um, indicator to join it to the shoulder seam. When I came to sew that bit, I didn't sew up the point. I just carried on on my lovely curve going round. That um, point is just there to show you where to attach the center of your sleeve. So my next step is to do my side seams. I need to pin from the end of my sleeve all the way down to the bottom of the t-shirt um, and again I will sew with a six millimeter or a quarter inch seam allowance and I'll do the same on both sides. Now it's worth noting 
that when you come to the underarm, um, it's not going to be an exact straight line. If you look, if I lay my t-shirt out, you've got an angle going on there. Um, and you don't want to sew straight line, stop, pivot, straight line. When you get to that section, just ease your fabric round so that in front of you, you have a straight line, okay? You don't want to stretch it, you don't want to distort it, but you want to be sewing in a straight line at all times. So just as you come to this underarm seam, just ease and wiggle your fabric until so it is sitting so that you can just continue in a fairly straight line and you'll get a much nicer finish than if you do a straight line, stop, pivot, straight line. So here you can see um, my t-shirt with the side seams sewn. So I sewed, pinned and sewed all the way from the end of the sleeve right down to the end of the t-shirt on both sides. And if I turn it the right way out, you can see it's starting to look a lot like a t-shirt. So the next step is to do the sleeve cuffs and the bottom cuffs. You do all of them in the same way. I'll start with the bottom cuff because it's larger and so it's a little easier to show. So I cut out my cuff fabric at the beginning and all you need to do is fold it in half so that you match the two short ends and then you want to pin and sew along those short end using a six millimeter quarter inch seam allowance. You use the same seam allowance for every seam in this pattern. So it's a nice, easy one to remember. So I'm going to sew along this edge here and that will create one long loop of fabric. So here's my um, waist cuff with the short end sewn. And the next thing you need to do is lift the bottom of that cuff so that you've made a double layer cuff of fabric. So all that is, is two layers. The wrong sides are facing each other. The right side is facing me. Now, the next thing that's really useful to do is to mark the quarter points on your cuff. So by that, I mean, you've already got one here where your side seam is. Mark this other edge here, that would be your halfway point. And then mark the center of each of those. So you've got four evenly placed markers around the bottom of your cuff. So I'm just going to do it with pins, but you could do it um, with a dressmaking pen, tailor's chalk, whatever your chosen method of marking is. So here I've got my cuff of fabric and I've got pins or a seam marking each of the four quarter points. The next thing you need to do is take the bottom of your t-shirt and do the same thing. You've already got two marked here because you've got two side seams. So you can just fold the whole thing in half and place a marker on both of those layers. Do them individually, don't pin the two layers together. But there, I've now got four quarter points marked on the bottom of my t-shirt. One, two, three, four. The next thing you need to do is you need to place your t-shirt inside your cuff of fabric. I like to match up the side seam of my cuff with the side seam of my t-shirt. You could place the side seam of your cuff in the center back if you prefer. Just um, make some conscious decision about where you're gonna put it. Don't have it in the center front. So the whole of my t-shirt bottom needs to fit inside my cuff. Now your t-shirt is going to be bigger than your cuff. That's the point of them. The cuffs kind of draw things together um, and make them neat at the bottom. So the cuff is intentionally smaller than your um, t-shirt. And by marking these four quarter points, you're gonna be able to really evenly distribute that cuff around the bottom. So you have a nice, even, gentle gather, not a real bunch at one side and then at nothing at the other side. So I'm gonna start by matching up those two side seams because that's the most important. That's one, if I get it wrong, you will be able to tell. And then I'm gonna work my way around and match up the rest of those points, making sure that all my layers are lying nicely. So 
So there I've attached my cuff to my t-shirt um, at the four quarter points. Um, unless you are super confident at doing cuffs and you've done lots of them already, I recommend adding in um, at least four more pins to secure the sections in between. One last thing to mention is if you're using a directional print for your cuff, you want to make sure that your cuff, um, the print is the same way as your t-shirt. Now mine, it is a directional print, but this section here is non-directional. These snowflakes could go either way. But if I flip it over to how it's gonna look when I've sewn it, I do have these hearts, um, which need to be the same direction as these hearts. If you've got your cuff like this with all your raw edges pointing to the bottom, you want this part of the print to be the right way up. This feels a little counterintuitive because you know that you're gonna be flipping your cuff down in a minute, but you've gotta remember that it's the other side of the fabric that you're gonna be seeing. If I had koalas on this part of my cuff, my koalas would want to be facing the right way up while I have my t-shirt laid out flat like this. So while the raw edges are all facing the same way and my t-shirt is inside my cuff, the print on my cuff wants to be the right way up. Then when you've sewn it all and you flip your cuff down and you're looking at the other side of the fabric, your print will still be the right way up. So I'm gonna pop in a few more pins here and then I'm going to sew this again using my six millimeter quarter inch seam allowance. So here's my t-shirt with the cuff sewn all the way on. And all I need to do there is flip the cuff down and that's the bottom of the t-shirt finished. So next is the sleeve cuffs. They are created and added in exactly the same way. So you need to take one of your sleeve cuff pieces, fold it in half, matching the two short edges, and then sew along that short edge to create another ring of fabric, which I have done here. And then again, you lift up the fabric at the bottom to create a double layer cuff. And then you need to attach that to your sleeve in the same way you attached it to the bottom. So um, that's why I showed you the bottom one first, because it's um, much larger and it's easier to show that quarter point marking and how to stretch and how to sew. But you do exactly the same thing to attach your sleeve cuff to your sleeve. So I will attach my two sleeve cuffs now. So we're really nearly there. We've got the waist cuff on, we've got the arm cuffs on. The only thing left to do now is the neck band. Now I didn't cut my neck band out earlier because I am not going to be using the same fabric for the neck band. This is something that gets asked in the group often is can I use the main fabric for a neckband on a t-shirt? And the answer is yes, but it's not ideal. Um, if you are using a really good quality cotton lycra jersey like this is, it's great for leggings, it's great for waistbands, it's great for t-shirts that are gonna last a really long time. But this is um, quite a thick jersey and it's got a really good stretch and return. The return means it goes back to its original shape um, when you, have stretched it. So it's got quite a strong stretch to it. For a neckband, you want a softer stretch to get the nieces finished. If you used the main fabric, you ran the risk of your waist, your neckband, sorry, sticking up and not sitting really flat and flush to the neckline. Um, and like I say, it comes up in the Facebook group a lot and people are saying, oh, what's the percentage I need to add if I'm um, using cotton micro jersey? There isn't a fixed percentage. By all means, go away and experiment. I do all the time. I mean, I have made many t-shirts where I have used the main fabric for the neckband. If I haven't had the right colour ribbing to hand, or if I just really felt that using a different colour would take away from the impact of the print, I have done it. And it can work really well. But it is more difficult to get a really neat finish than it is by using um, ribbing. Ribbing is much gentler and much softer. If you do want to use your main fabric, a good place to start is by adding about 5% to the length of your neckband. You may find you need to go up as far as 10%. Um, the best thing to do is to cut it out. So the ends of your neckband, so you've got your double layer cuff like we've done for the arms, like we've done for the bottom cuff, and pin it to your neckband and see how it feels. You should be able to get an idea of whether it's going to stretch well, whether it feels like it's the right length, but really there's no um, hard and fast rule to be able to do that. It's just a case of going away and experimenting. 
But I'm going to be a good person for once and follow the instructions, which say to use ribbing for the neckband. So I'm going to go and cut my neckband now, which for this size is 14 and 3 eighths by 1 and 5 eighths. And then I will apply it in exactly the same way as I have done my arm cuffs and the bottom cuff. Okay, this is a really good pattern for practicing the same technique over and over again. I will fold and sew those short ends. I will make a double layer cuff and I will pin it evenly around the um, neckline. So here's my neckband. So I folded it in half, I've sewn the short end, and then I'm going to fold it to create that double layer cuff. Now, the neckband, sorry, the neckline on your t-shirt is not so easy to divide into quarter points as the rest of the areas we've been adding cuffs to because the front is so much longer than the back. You could, if you wanted, um, take a tape measure and measure out the quarter points. That would be a really accurate way to do it. Um, I, I tend to just pin um, one part of my neckband on. I like to match my seams to one of the shoulder seams, but again, you can match it to the center back. And then just stretch it and do it by feel. Um, it can take a little bit more time until you get used to um, how neckbands fit and how much you have to stretch them. But um, I, I just stretch it and try and really evenly pin it around um, and pop several pins in and then stop and take a look and have a look and see whether it feels, whether it's even or not. So there, my neckband is pinned on and ready to sew. Like I say, if you don't feel confident doing it by feel, then get that tape measure out, measure around your neckband, measure where the quarter point should go and do it do, using the same quarter point method we used for the other two cuffs, okay? I'm a big um, encourager of taking a little extra time to get the best finish. Don't um, feel pressured to do it a particular way or to do it a faster way um, if you don't feel confident doing that, okay? So take your time and get a finish that you're really happy with. But I'm going to go away now and sew my neckband and I'll come back and show you that when it's finished. And here's my finished Emmy top. Um, so you can see I've sewn my neckband on and because I chose to use ribbing, that ribbing is sitting really nice and flat. It's got a soft stretch and it can stretch really um, well around the neckline. That's gonna sit really nicely against Charlie when he's wearing this. Now, because this is for pyjamas, I'm not going to top stitch. Um, I feel like it's not needed for a pyjama top. And I also feel like the fewer lines of stitching um, that you can do as possible on a pyjama is going to make it more comfortable. Why have extra stitching and threads on the inside that you don't need? If this were for a daytime t-shirt, I would grab a twin needle and I would top stitch all the way around that neckband. Um, but you don't have to. Um, if you don't love top stitching and you really enjoyed the fact that this has involved no hemming and top stitching, then you don't need to. Um, equally, if you don't have a twin needle, a zigzag stitch or another stretch stitch will work really well for top stitching your neckband. So I hope that um, that's been helpful and I hope that you now feel confident to go and have a go at sewing an Emmy t-shirt yourself. If you do, please remember to share photos, drop them on Facebook, tag me on Instagram and make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so that you know when the next video comes up.